In this example, you'll be shown how to find the final concentrations of individual ions when two non-reacting solutions are mixed. 500 milliliters, a 0.25 molar FeCl3, is mixed with 800 milliliters, a 0.15 molar K2SO4, and no reaction occurs. We're asked to calculate the final concentrations of all four ions in the final mixture. The first time you do a problem like this, it's a good idea to visualize what's going on. We start by adding 500 milliliters, a 0.25 molar FeCl3, to a beaker. And we'll make a note of that here. 800 milliliters, a 0.15 molar K2SO4, is added to another beaker. And we'll also label that one. We get a third beaker, which is larger, and we pour the 500 milliliters of FeCl3 solution into this beaker. Then we pour the 800 milliliters of K2SO4 solution into the same beaker. So in this beaker, we have a mixture of 800 milliliters of K2SO4 and 500 milliliters of FeCl3. We stir the solution to mix it. We can calculate the total volume by adding 800 milliliters to 500 milliliters, which gives a total of 1300 milliliters for the final volume of the solution. So in our beaker, we have 1300 milliliters of a solution of FeCl3 and K2SO4 that are mixed. But what are the molar concentrations of K2SO4 and FeCl3 in the final mixture? When two solutions are mixed, both of them are diluted. So we find the final concentrations using the dilution formula, C1V1 is equal to C2V2. Here we'll summarize a process that can be used to find individual ion concentrations in a mixture of solutions that do not have the same ion in common. For each compound that was added to the mixture, we first used the dilution formula to find the final concentration of the solution as a whole. Next, we write a dissociation equation showing the compound breaking up into its individual ions, making sure we balance it with the correct coefficients. Lastly, we use the mole ratio shown by the coefficients in this dissociation equation to find the final concentration of each individual ion. We repeat these three steps for each solution we added to the mixture. So first it's dilution, then dissociation, and lastly, its mole ratios to find the concentration of each ion. We'll start with the FeCl3 solution. In the first step, we'll use the dilution formula to find the final concentration of FeCl3 as a whole. The dilution formula is C1V1 is equal to C2V2, where C is the concentration and V is the volume. We can start with the formula as it is. The final concentration of FeCl3 will be equal to the final concentration, C2, which we'll solve for. Rearranging the equation gives us C2 is equal to C1V1 over V2. The initial concentration, C1, is 0.25 molar, and the initial volume, V1, is 500 milliliters. To find the final volume, V2, we add up the volumes of the two solutions we're mixing. 500 plus 800 is equal to 1300 milliliters. We cancel out the milliliters and 0.25 times 500 divided by 1300 is equal to 0 0.0962 molar. We'll work in three significant figures, but at the end of the problem, we'll round to two. So we can state that the final concentration of FeCl3 as a whole is 0 0.0962 molar. We'll make a note of that up here. The second step in the process is to write an equation showing the dissociation of FeCl3 into its individual ions. So we start with aqueous FeCl3. FeCl3 aqueous gives Fe3 plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. Now a very important step is to balance this equation. Chlorine has a subscript of three in the formula for the compound that means we get three chloride ions for every FeCl3. So we write the coefficient three here. So now we have the balanced equation for FeCl3 dissociating. The third step in this process is to use the mole ratios in this dissociation equation 
to find the concentrations of the individual ions. The concentration of FeCl3 as a whole is 0 0.0962 molar. So we'll write that above the FeCl3 in the dissociation equation. We'll start by finding the concentration of Fe3+. We draw an arrow pointing toward the Fe3+, on top of the equation. The coefficient on Fe3+, is 1. And the coefficient on FeCl3 is also 1. So the mole ratio of Fe3+, to FeCl3, is 1 to 1. Since we're talking about the same volume, the concentrations are in the same ratio as the moles. So we can use mole ratios as concentration ratios. We write the multiplier times 1 over 1 for the mole ratio on top of the arrow pointing to the Fe3+, like this. So to find the concentration of Fe3+, we multiply 0 0.0962 times 1 over 1, which of course equals 0 0.0962 molar. So the concentration of Fe3+, is 0 0.0962 molar. To find the concentration of chloride, we draw an arrow from FeCl3 to Cl-. The mole ratio of Cl- to FeCl3 is 3 moles of Cl- to 1 mole of FeCl3. So we write the multiplier times 3 over 1 on top of this arrow. Note that the coefficient the arrow is pointing to is always the top number in the fraction. In this case, it's the number 3. We multiply 0 0.0962 by 3 over 1, and we get 0.289 molar for the concentration of the chloride ion. So we'll make a note of that up here, that the concentration of Fe3 plus is 0 0.0962 molar, and the concentration of Cl minus is 0.289 molar. So now we've finished with the FeCl3, so we can go through the process with the other compound, K2SO4. In step 1, we use the dilution formula to calculate the concentration of K2SO4 as a whole. The dilution formula is C1V1 is equal to C2V2. The final concentration of K2SO4 we'll call C2, which is equal to C1V1 over V2. The concentration before mixing, or the initial concentration C1, is 0.15 molar. And the initial volume of the K2SO4 solution, V1, was 800 milliliters. The final volume, V2, is the sum of the volumes of the two added solutions, 500 milliliters plus 800 milliliters, which equals 1300 milliliters. We cancel out the milliliters and go 0.15 times 800 divided by 1300, which gives us 0 0.0923 molar. So the concentration of K2SO4 as a whole, after mixing the two solutions, is 0 0.0923 molar. We'll make a note of that up here. In step 2, we write a dissociation equation showing K2SO4 separating into its individual ions. We write K2SO4 aqueous gives 2K plus aqueous plus SO4 to minus aqueous, and we see that this is balanced. The third step is to use the mole ratios in this equation to find the final concentrations of each ion. The concentration of K2SO4 as a whole is 0 0.0923 molar, so we write that on top of the formula in the dissociation equation. To find the concentration of K+, we draw an arrow from K2SO4 to K+, and we see by looking at the coefficients that the mole ratio of K+, to K2SO4 is 2 to 1. So we write the multiplier times 2 over 1 on top of the arrow. Again, the blue arrow is pointing to the coefficient 2, so the number 2 is on top of this fraction. Multiplying 0 0.0923 times 2 over 1 gives us 0.185 molar for the concentration of K+. Now to find the concentration of sulfate, or SO4 2 minus. We draw an arrow from K to SO4 to SO4 2 minus. And we see by looking at the coefficients that the mole ratio of SO4 to minus to K2SO4 is 1 to 1. So we write times 1 over 1 on top of the arrow. So the final concentration of SO4 to minus, or sulfate, is 0.0923 molar. So we can make a note of that up here, that the final concentration of K plus is 0.185 molar, and the final concentration of SO4 to minus is 0.0923 molar. 
So now we can summarize the answer to the original question. If 500 milliliters, a 0.25 molar FeCl3, is mixed with 800 milliliters, a 0.15 molar K2SO4, the final concentrations of all four ions in the final mixture are as follows. The concentration of Fe3 plus is 0.0962 molar. However, at this point, we consider significant figures. Notice that the two concentrations given in this problem have only two significant figures. This means that our answers must be rounded to two significant figures. So if we round 0.0962 to two significant figures, we get 0.096 molar. The concentration of Cl- is 0.289 molar, and rounding this to two significant figures gives us 0.29 molar. The concentration of K plus is 0.185 molar, and rounding this to two significant figures gives us 0.19 molar. The concentration of sulfate is 0.0923 molar, and rounding this to two significant figures gives us 0.092 molar. So we summarize the question and list the final concentrations of all four ions.